Hello and welcome. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, welcoming you to the show today. I'm so glad that you are spending some time with me and, you know, just took the time to actually click on the link or find my show or however you're here somebody shared it with you I'm just so happy that you're with me if you're not familiar with me or the show just let me say that I have this curiosity in my life and I go forth and try to find out different things about living your life making it easier to live your life Sometimes finding some information for you that can help save your life. But truly, I work to explore the world of positive thinking, Bible-based law of attraction, and consciousness from many points of view. And so it is definitely always my intention to share with you that information and that information that will enlighten and empower you in your life. There are times when I talk about some things that are kind of difficult. I share things with you that are going on with me that may help you make the changes that you need to make. So welcome. If you want to take a little bit, of time and explore a little bit more, you can go to my website at commandingyourlife.com or you can find me on YouTube (laughs) at Beverly Fells Jones and on Facebook in the same area. But let's get started today. That's enough about me. So I've been taking some time and kind of going through things in the house and working to get rid of stuff and asking people do you need this do you need this I have a copy of that or I have that item it don't you don't need to go out and buy it because I was and still am at times (laughs) a consumer right many of us are consumers and I would spend money on things that I wanted, you know, things that I needed, of course, but, oh, this is the latest gadget. Let me tell you, now, when I was sewing a lot, and I think I've mentioned in previous shows, I used to make all my clothes, and I was a quilter. Well, I had, like, I had to go buy the best sewing machine with all the bells and whistles, and You know, when a few years, and then one one machine, I did keep like 10 years, and I gave that to my daughter, and I went and bought another one of the fancier machines, and when I was quilting, um, I was making king-size quilts, and it was really, really hard to machine quilt them on a small quilter, so I bought a quilting machine, a whole 12-foot item, and it sits here now because I haven't been quilting much. And I have about four tops I need to to quilt. Well, on the YouTube channel, I do a thing called Napoleon Hill Tuesdays. And last Tuesday's topic was from his Law of Success. And that Law of Success was called Saving. (laughs) Yeah, Saving. Right, and I look around now. I've gotten pleasure from everything that I have purchased, and then there were some things I got, and I went, Oh, really? And so that's why I talk about that. Now I'm at a time in my life where I want to downsize. But I also look around and say what pleasure I got from the things that I purchased and also did they do something for me or somebody else 
you know, like with the quilting machine, uh, and when I first purchased it, I purchased, I, what I want to say, I started a quilting machine business, and I quilted quilts for other people, and took in that money, and that helped pay for my quilting machine. And by having a business, so guys, folks, listen up. By having that business, I was able to write off the cost of that quilting machine. So as I look at that quilting machine, I took in money for quilting other people's quilts. And then I was able to depreciate that machine to the point where the income and the depreciation paid for the machine. Okay. So yes, it was something I really wanted in my life to help it be easier for me to quilt quilts. But I also saw a way to earn money with that machine. Right? That machine, I didn't buy the top of the line. I bought a basic machine that would be good for me and could fit in my house, right? (laughs) But I found a way to pay for it without paying for it. Got me? Now, some people today, they want a new vehicle. And so they're finding a way to pay for that new vehicle by being an Uber driver or a Lyft driver, all right, to allow them to have that new vehicle and pay for it. My only thing, and there's a depreciation with that, or you can do uh, mileage that you spend, and so that helps to pay for it. But And I did do that for half a minute when I first got my truck. But once Uber changed their structure of how they paid, it did not pay for me to drive my truck in that situation. Now, if I had a vehicle that had was getting 32 miles to the gallon or 25 miles to the gallon, it might have been a little different. But um, what I'm talking about here right now is the fact that look at the way you're spending money law of success savings and so Napoleon Hill when he was talking in this lesson it wasn't so much about saving as it was to be prepared to invest in a business Invest in something that will make you money. So many people here and today are busy spending every dime that they make on something. New clothes. So yesterday, I worked at Nebraska Furniture Mart. And I'm proud to tell folks that I'm working at a store. And you go, but Bev, you're supposed to be talking about, you know, getting rich and, and um, you know, being successful. I am successful. You're listening to me. I'm successful in getting you to listen to me and understand that I talk about the things that can help change your life. So I work part-time at Nebraska Furniture Mart, and this is a holiday weekend, so it is busy. I mean, it is just so busy. But I'm getting off where I was going to go with that. I saw so many people, so many ladies, walking around with MK on their bags. Those of you that don't know that, that's Michael Kors and Coach and Louis Vuitton and I don't know, Kate Spade. I don't know, okay? 
and I don't know their circumstances. Okay. But I do know a couple of people's circumstances that came with a designer bag. And their circumstances are not good. I've met people who are not are barely making enough money to support themselves and their household, but they have to have that designer bag. Now, if that person is going to the outlet and you know finding it at a discount, or like me, <laughs> I did a real big score. I got a Louis Vuitton bag at a Goodwill. And all I can say is whoever was doing the bags did not recognize that it was a real Louis Vuitton bag. I opened it, checked it, labels, everything, making sure it wasn't a knockoff. So the key here is this. You can buy designer label things. I've been to the Michael Kors store when I didn't know what a Michael Kors was. <laughs> Went to the back, all the way to the back. You know what I mean by going all the way to the back. Yes. And I went and um, on the wall, and I was looking for a white dress, a white sundress, because my other white sundress had finally bit the dust. It was, you know... It just wasn't white anymore under the arms, and it was got a couple stains on it I couldn't get out. So it was time to get rid of that dress. I love that dress. And I went to the back, and I saw this white strapless dress, and I fell in love with it. I tried it on. It fit perfectly, and I bought it. And at the time, I was um, in Ohio at the outlet mall. I had driven up there because I was w working for HP, and I was teaching a class in Ohio. I drove because I dropped my daughter off in Louisville to visit with her high school friend, and then I drove on up, did the class, came back to pick them up. And I said, oh, look at what I found. This is real. I really love this dress. And her friend looked at it and, you know, and she looked on the inside and saw the label and she screamed, it's a Michael Kors. Da -da 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 -da. I go, what in the world is a Michael Kors? <laughs> she said, oh, man, how much, how much, how much? I said, $25. She said, what? I said, in the back, on the markdown and take an additional 75% off. The story is, you can get what you want, but the the leader, the person that wins, is doesn't matter how much money you make; it's how much you keep. How much is in that savings account to help you with an emergency? Yeah, an emergency. Now, if you Go to my YouTube channel. I'm not going to repeat everything I did on Napoleon Hill Tuesday. But you go to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are listening to this on Spreaker. Those of you who are listening on YouTube. Just go to, the, just go to my videos under the playlist Napoleon Hill. And you'll find the one on savings. But the key is you need to have some money in case of emergencies. If you are, live out of town and you live out of town from your relatives or your mother or father and there's an emergency and you have to go, do you have the money to go? Do you have the money to get on a plane? And for me, I've got really good friend in Pittsburgh and a really good friend in Detroit area and I've got a really good friend in 
you know, North Carolina. Yeah, I got the money saved to be able to get there if I need to. But what about you? If you need to buy a tire for your car, do you have the money to do that or have a repair done? Do you have an emergency savings sitting back there? Then I'm going to make the recommendation that you look at your weekly budget and see the things that you're spending money on that you don't have to. Now, I get this this one. I go, how many times do you go out to eat? And they go, I don't like to cook. I don't know what to cook. And I go, you can go on the internet. There's food wishes. There's all recipes. There's all kinds of blogs for people teach you how to cook on YouTube. My Wednesday YouTube upload is mostly me cooking something in the kitchen. And I talk about cooking something. You can learn to boil an egg, make egg salad. You can learn to broil a steak or chicken breasts or put some chicken in the oven. There's all kinds of ways because if you cook at home, it saves you money. You can cook a meal for $2. I'm cooking some greens right now I got from Kroger's. Um, They were marked down by two thirds. So I paid one third the price on those greens. Got them last night, cooking them this morning as I speak. So if you don't go out to eat, let's say you go out to eat four days a week and you cut it down to two days a week and you cook at home, you learn to cook at home. Get a simple three ingredient cookbook. The savings that you do by not going out to eat two nights a week, you can put in a bank account, a savings account, or in the piggy bank or the jar and begin to save enough to create that emergency fund. Every last one of us can find something that we're spending money on that we can cut back. You know, my favorite is going to Starbucks, talking about going to Starbucks because I make my own coffee at home and take it with me. So you cut out, and maybe you're paying $5 for that Starbucks thing, right? I think there's a smaller version that you can get for like $2.50, and you take that other $2.50 you're spending each day. So that's five, $7.50 a week put it in that savings. So let's round that up to $8 and that's four times eight is $32 a month that you can put in there. What other places can you see where you can save some money and put it away? Lot of success savings so that you don't have to go borrow money. So that you don't have to Uh, And some of you have used those payday loan places whose interests are exorbitant. I have a Sears charge card. I don't use it, or when I do use it, I pay it off before the 30 days. So I don't pay interest. The interest is 24%. 24%. That's ridiculous. That's... You know, one quarter. No. So look at your life. Look at ways that you can put some pennies away. And those pennies will turn to dollars. And they'll turn to hundreds of dollars. And they can turn to thousands of dollars. 
And one day, if an opportunity presents itself for you to be able to invest. So I tell people to take that money, get it up to 500 and then find yourself a financial advisor who specializes in beginning savers. You want to buy a house? You want to buy that new car? That, tra- that transportation to take you from one point to another? Or an upgraded car? Not a new car, but a good used vehicle? Then start by saving. Now, um, in the description in the Napoleon Hill Tuesday, at the bottom is a link. And I'll put it in the in this speaker one too, but there's a link to have you purchase the book Law of Success in Sixteen Lessons by Napoleon Hill. Now I only mentioned a small piece in that thing about in that YouTube video on that chapter because that chapter is 60 some pages so he goes in depth and I've just hit on a small piece and to tell you the truth this was not today's topic today's topic was supposed to be on fear but I've talked about fear many times I'll do that next time but this whole idea of saving and and being prepared for any emergency is really important. Now, some of you in my conversation, you may feel that I'm talking directly to you. I am. Because I know what it feels like to not have any money. Years ago, I was in a not too great of a position in marriage. And I was pregnant with my daughter. And I was working for IBM. But in those days, you had to leave work at six months pregnant. And there wasn't much money coming in. So I had to humble myself and go in and ask for assistance in the welfare office. I had no savings. The gentleman, thankfully, as we were talking and the tears were coming down my eyes, rolling down my face, you know how you, you know, I got Kleenex, because I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to admit that I had made a mistake. in my choice of spouse. And that particular welfare worker talked to me and he says, God says here you've been working. I said, yeah, I've been working there for over seven years. He says, have you been paying taxes? I go, yeah. He said, So you've been paying into the system. I said, okay. He said, this is what we're here for. To help you in these situations. Now today it might be totally different the way they treat people. But I started to feel a little better. I said, I won't be on this long. He said, while you need us. And at that point, that point, I made the decision that once I went back to work, I would never be in that position again. That if I had to be off from work for whatever reason, and by the way, they didn't pay you during those three months. I I didn't start getting a paycheck 
um, until I had my daughter because now it was disability and that, you know, I was allotted, I had a C-section, so I was off eight weeks. And so I got that. But during those three months, I was on leave without pay. And there was no backup money. There was no money in the savings account or anything. I had to go ask for help. So have you ever been in a situation where you had to go ask mom, dad, friends, cousins, relatives for money to help you get over some hump? And they looked at you, you didn't feel good asking. Or maybe you did. I don't know where you are emotionally or mentally. But if you take the time to look at your finances, and even if you're in big debt, you can still find money in your budget somewhere. If not, work some extra hours, get some additional training, find a better paying job. I want you to dream big and live the life that you really want to live. Not feeling or not having a poverty mindset. Because you are abundant and you have the ability to have abundant riches. I don't care what your circumstances are. So, this is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, encouraging you to find the silver lining in that cloud that you may be in at this moment. Find that, you know, and and this just came to mind, if you could only save a dollar a week, two dollars a week, and each time you find something else that you can cut out or make more money and start saving, and as you see those savings grow, you will begin to have a different feeling inside of you. And as I said, you find a trusted financial advisor that helps you take that $100, that $200, and invest it in a way that it'll make you some money and it'll start growing. And as you see your savings grow, you will have a different feeling inside because you know that you are becoming self-sufficient. And those of you who are making a lot of money, you can find a hundred, two hundred, even three hundred dollars a month to put away. And think about putting away and when you're ready to buy, put a car payment away. And when you're ready to buy your next car, go in and pay cash. Man, that is a really good feeling to go in and pay cash for whatever it is that you're buying. I've watched people at my part-time job plop down $5,000 in cash because they had it. They saved it. It's a wonderful feeling, and don't think that you can't ever do it. Like I said, you can start out with a penny, and a penny becomes a dollar, and a dollar becomes two dollars. You can do it. And you can always send me an email. Get in touch with me through this channel, and I would be glad to spend 30 minutes with you and have a conversation. The link is at the, in the description. 
for a breakthrough strategy session, I would be more than happy to do that with you. So take care, and I will see you next time. Thank you for listening today. Please share the link to this show with your friends and family so that they can learn how to be the best that they can be. Visit my website at commandingyourlife.com and follow me on Facebook. Have any suggestions for the show? Just contact me by emailing Beverly at commandingyourlife.com. Be sure to join me on the next episode. As you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so.